This is definitely more prep than I've ever done for anything. Hello, hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And for the month of March, prep March, my brother David and I have been working on creating a story together that we're gonna try and write every day for Camp NaNoWriMo. Now I have co-written a project once before. We're actually in the process of submitting it to Hallmark. <laughs> But that was like, it. that started five years ago, right? And so David and I have always, we've always thrown out ideas together. We've always pitched each other. We brainstormed together. We just like talking about stories. And while we've talked about writing a book together before, it never really went very far. Um, maybe just like a couple days or something of saying how fun it would be or whatever. But this year, this month, today, <laughs> right now. David and I are making that dream a very real thing, which is awesome. So he's actually going to be in this vlog. I got him to vlog with me the whole process. As a quick reminder, for those of you who have not seen the prepuary <laughs> video, David and I did meet at the end of February to kind of go over what our expectations were, figuring out dates to meet up, and which part of the planning process we needed to cover each meeting. So on Sunday the 6th, the goal was to discover sort of the background of this town. So a quick pseudo synopsis is that this is a dystopian novel, YA, with alternating point of view characters. There is basically a mob family that runs this town that one character is part of. A mob family that goes back, you know, five, six, seven generations of ruling over this area. And the other point of view character is part of a group that discovers an old theater. Art and everything like that have been outlawed in this town. Think very like uh, a semi-realistic footloose. <laughs> and so there's different factions of this rebel group, those who just want to perform and learn more about the arts and participate in this theater, and those who want to try to take down the family. And of course, the kid over here, who's part of the mob family, discovers the secret theater and discovers his love for performing. It is a tragedy for, for some of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> for one character in particular. But anyways, we had some of this figured out. I talked about it in this other video, but we really wanted to hammer out the backstory of this town, how it came to be. And of course, in doing that, you know, you learn more about the mob family. You learn more about why a rebel group in this town would start, why there were failed rebellions before that they're not taught about. Yes. All right, it is Friday, March 11th at 1 p.m. And I am going to send David the Zoom link, um, which is nice because uh, I save all the uh, Zoom stuff to my computer so that I will have copies of them forever until I delete them, <laughs> um, which is fun because that also gives me the opportunity of like, when I see us have specific epiphanies, I can be like, it was that moment, that moment. Cause sometimes, you know, you just, you don't remember when you've realized something and you know how like a certain stories, once you realize the thing, you're like, how did I not see this before? This is how it was always meant to be. So you just kind of, it's like you start over from there almost. Now I'll have the moment where we were just like, a pivot here. No meeting. It's us. Recording in progress. Indeed. What I did last time is I just shared my screen so that we could work on it together. And basically this is what we came up with uh, all about the town. Last it was five days ago. Somehow we managed, you know, 1300 words of planning <laughs> and we got so much figured out. So I'm really excited to see today's plan is to work out the main character and his arc. And obviously in figuring out the backstory of the town and he's part of the mobbish family. We were able to figure out a bit about his backstory and some of why he's influenced by the family the way he is and like where he's wanting to go. So anyways, when you do one thing, it touches everything else. So in theory, it ought to be pretty easy by the time we get down to here, like we'll have figured out a lot of it already. This is definitely more prep than I've ever done for anything, mostly because I've never gotten anywhere further than just thinking about a story and like plot elements. 
uh, while I'm like driving the car in traffic or something. So it's an interesting experience finally having a uh, set plot to try to write with. Definitely more structured. So that's definitely good. My computer still converting the meeting, but Dave and I, he had uh, a really good thought after the chat was done. So we spitballed some more and I really like it. Oh, oh. Oh, that's good. Bum, bum, bum. I think the most fun part of this for me is getting to have that back and forth, that kind of built in person to discuss the story with and be as excited about it as you. But it's an automatic sounding board, which I think can be so huge, um, not just to affirm you, but also to push back and be like, I don't know that that makes sense given X, Y, Z. You know, these things that would become plot holes if you didn't sort of snuff them out now, but it's hard when you're brainstorming by yourself sometimes to realize. So two brains being better than one here. <laughs> I'm in this fucking giant ass shirt that's eating me because I got it for free for doing a blood drive event thing at, uh, at college. As far as co-writing goes, I think it's really cool because I have someone to bounce ideas off of. It's been really beneficial for me because often I have no idea what I want to do next as far as where the plot's heading. I could see where it'd be problematic for someone who wants to have a lot of control on what happens because then you'd have to convince your, your co-writer. And I could see there being conflicts with someone being like, uh, I don't like the idea of a giant explosion going off randomly, but you really want the explosion to go off. I'm just lucky that uh, you wanted there to be a big explosion. Now the fun part about discovering more about the male main character is that we have the sort of foil in some respects for the female main character and as we're figuring out his personality and some of these integral scenes that need to happen, what drives his motivation, what how he discovers his new passion for the theater, we're making plot points as we go, right? So we tried to note those down. It's like she's writing, like she's helping us. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> uh, David, can you explain to me what we're doing on our third meeting of the month? Oh shit. I'm I putting you on the spot. The, uh, I need to look up the, the list to see, but I mean, aren't we doing something about the, no, timeline's the last thing. Uh, um, I don't know. What's the answer? <laughs> Thursday the 17th. Build That's up it. the theater, love interest slash rebellion leader. What are her responsibilities before meeting the dude? Why and when she decides to train for her cause? Okay. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to be focusing on the other lead character um, who will be the focus that I will be. You'll writing. be writing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so, fun. Exciting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's at the top of the list? Always. What is their um, name? Which we don't have. <laughs> We'll wait until the end. And then we just had our second to last meeting yesterday as of my recording of this video. <laughs> Sunday the 27th. Now originally I'd put go over the Save the Cat beat sheet, but the interesting thing here is that as we'd really built up the history of the town, the history of his mob boss ruling family, the area of their domain, what the male main character's specific parents' role are in this big family, what his own role might be, the importance of the cousins and how there's gonna be a betrayal within the family, all sorts of stuff. As we're doing all of this, and as we figure out more about the rebel group, how they pass their messages, and as we find out more about the female main character, her own family, and why her personal philosophy on things differs from her parents, how she gets in with the rebel group, how they built out their rebellion, because we're kind of getting to see it from the beginning, not fully the beginning, but really close to the beginning, how she passes their messages, how she uses art and science together to create some things. Anyways, as we're doing all of this, we more or less built out what we needed from Save the Cat. This is often how I find writing goes anyways. I usually find that as I learn more about the character, I can really help to flesh out the major plot points that I already knew. Like I usually only know beginning, middle, end. I, I know a lot about the beginning up to then side the incident, right? And a little bit of the, the drama that occurs after. And I tend to know exactly where I want it to end. In this case, we knew that we wanted it to be a tragedy, at least for one of the characters. <laughs> 
but it's that middle part that can get really murky and how do these characters lives become intertwined? Will the rebellion finally be able to overthrow the family? Will they only be able to overthrow part of it? How is this town going to change after the discovery of this theater? So on and so forth. <laughs> so we went ahead and started just creating the timeline and actually piecing out how many days the story is going to take over, what the pacing is going to look like, especially for the big moments where we're basically going from immediately ending this chapter to in the timeline immediately starting the next chapter from this person's point of view. Yes. All right, I'm going to go to oh, Secret Theater. We made a grade. Eh. Oh, okay. Just gonna roll over. You wanna play? Or can I get your tummy? Will you let me get your tummy right now? <laughs> oh, you want that. <laughs> Anyways. So David and I are, are meeting for the second to last time before Preparch is over. <laughs> In about 10 minutes. Um, so what I wanted to do real quick, because we're using Google Docs, is I'm going to try and set up a timeline within Google Sheets. That way we're both able to see it at all times, both able to access and look and make some comments and changes. So timeline. So we need um, the point of view character noted, the scenes within the chapter, timeline with a question mark. So basically I'm thinking it'll be like day one sort of thing and then go from there. Uh, point of view character and the individual scenes and then from here we'll do a uh, sort of chapter bundle. And then we can list out the scenes in case there are multiple. And then once that's done, just bundle the chapter into one so that it's easier to see. It has been so fun getting to do this prep with him. It's gonna be really interesting to see as I don't always write every day, but I'm keeping that goal so that we'll have the same goal of writing every day, uh, kind of keep each other accountable. So it's gonna be fun to see how that goes, even if it's just like a hundred words a day kind of thing, that might be nice. better. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> hey, oh, let's go. Hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> oh record this. It's fine. It's fine. I don't need to record it too late. No, See, did no, you? no, no. It's not something you need to share. I mean, like, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you asked me to type for a video. That's always what I type too. I'm like, I'm just typing nonsense for a video, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, and understandably, and also not being so obvious that some rando can figure it out. Can just happen upon it, yeah. Yeah. But we do need um, him to kind of happen upon it. So that's kind of yes. the thing. <laughs> so, well, that's what I'm saying. So do we want to do that? Or do we want it to just be like, uh, oh, okay, we just have like the weekly performance on this day? Um. Because I'm fine with it being just a weekly performance done on like the same however many days, like a Saturday night or something like that. It yeah. makes sense for like the college kids. So we got through 18 chapters yesterday and I think we're going to need about 12 more chapters maybe uh, before the story is is done done. So it's, it's very exciting. We're gonna have multiple betrayals in that time. I feel like we've really built it up and now we're closing in. Thankfully, though we don't have the exact chapters outlined, we will do that on the 31st of March. We do kind of already know exactly where it's leading. We've already put those notes elsewhere in our Google Doc or Google folder secret theater. <laughs> so now that March is more or less done, I did ask David how he's feeling going into April. Hey, so uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident going into April. Um, I feel like I'll be able to write pretty consistently. Honestly, the hardest part is just sitting down, getting my computer out and just starting writing because once I start writing, I for the most part can at least like <laughs> crank out at least a little bit of stuff. So I think that'll be the key is just forcing myself to open up the, the tablet and keyboard and 
two finger typing my way to uh, to victory. I've said before that I I love my brother's writing, so I'm excited to be able to uh, write this story with him. We did not set a word count goal for the day. It's just to it's just to write every day, and we kind of talked about it in our last meeting. If we think we're going to be able to finish the story before April's over, the plus side of co-writing is that if I like to aim for like sixty thousand words in my first draft let's pretend. And so if you're both writing 30,000 over the course of the month, it just goes much quicker. In this case, it might be something more like 40,000, 20,000 that David will write. Or as we've plotted out so much more of it, it might be one of those instances where, you know, this is a true first draft instead of the zero draft that I often like to do to discover. We've already done a lot of the discovery elements here. So maybe it is more like 80,000. <laughs> It'll be kind of a fun mystery, I guess, to see at the end of this. And finally, I did ask David what he is is most excited for at the end of this or to experience along the way. It'll be nice to finally have something that I've completed and be able to read and look back on and be like, hey, I contributed to that. You know, if I were trying to be sentimental, I would have said something like, oh, the part I'm looking forward to most has already happened. That's getting to talk about everything and plan all this stuff. And just hanging out is just what I'm looking forward to most. Uh, if I were Robert, I would probably say the thing I'm looking forward to most is being done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to be it for me. Wish us good luck on our final meeting of March. Please do comment down below. Let me know how you've been prepping for camp. Let me know if you've co-written anything before. Let me know if you're trying anything new this April. Let me know if you've also attempted a project with a, a family member or a friend before it's kind of failed and never really picked off the ground and how you finally were able to to sort of crest that and actually do it. The project with my co-writer, we'd also talked about, you know, doing a project together, writing something together before, and it was more just kind of a fun throwaway thing we both thought about until we finally did it, right? And so I'm I'm hoping though that it will not take five years to write this story on like <laughs> the other project. But either way, I think this April's going to be so much fun. I love the story. It's it's not super different from what I've done before, but I think the specifically tragic end for one of the characters is going to be great. Um, I've, you know, I've ruminated about having a tragic ending before. I usually like to do kind of bittersweet endings uh, at the worst. Um, and then I write a lot of romance where it's just happily ever afters, which I also love, but it's going to be nice to really flip it on its head and be like, one of you motherfuckers is, is, is gonna have a tough time. <laughs> and the end. <laughs> so let me know if you've also written a tragedy before. I would be very curious. But thank you guys so much for watching and David and I will see you throughout the course of April. Bye! <laughs>